Hi, welcome to the second session on divisibility rules. In this session, we are going to discuss the divisor 9 and 11. So when we divide a number by 9 and 11, what could be the remainder and how to find the remainder quite easily. In the previous session, I have discussed all these three. So this session, we are going to discuss divisors 9 and 11. Let's take a number n. As I explained to you previously, if n equal to, let's say a four digit number PQRS, this PQRS can be written as P000, Q00, R0 and S. And this is nothing but P into 1000, plus Q into 100, R into 10, plus R into 10, plus S into 1. And this is nothing but P into 10 cube, plus Q into 10 square, plus R into 10 power 1, and plus S into 10 power 0. This 10 is nothing but the base system, base. Since we considered base system 1000, uh, 10, so here these 10s are bases. Now, if you are considering base 9, then we just need to replace 10 with 9. Now when we are trying to divide n divided by let's say 9, we are trying to find the remainder. There's nothing but p by 10 cube, p into 10 cube by 9 remainder, plus q into 10 square by 9 remainder, plus r into 10 power 0. 1 by 9 remainder plus s into 10 power 0 by 9 remainder. That's nothing but p by 9 remainder into 10 cube by 9 remainder. We can find like this q by 9 remainder into 10 square by 9 remainder so r by 9 remainder into 10 power 1 by 9 remainder. Finally, the unit term s by 9 remainder into 10 power. 0 by 9 remainder. Now just like, try to find what could be the remainders here. 10 power 0 by 9 remainder I'm, I'm taking from I'm starting from unit digit 10 power 0 by 9 remainder that is 1 by 9 remainder is 1 s by 9 remainder depends on s so s into 1 it says it's s by 9 10 power 1 by 9 remainder is 1 so 1 into r it's r by 9 10 square by 9 remainder is also 1. Q by 9 remainder depends on Q. So it's going to be 1 time of Q. 10 Q by 9 remainder is 1. P by 9 remainder depends on P. So P by 9. This is nothing but P plus Q plus R plus S by 9. What is PQRS? The digits of the number. We have taken a four digit number, that's why we we are trying to add all the four digits. If another case we have had we considered a ten digit a ten digit number, then we'll have to add all of all the digits. That's quite simple. In the previous cases, that is when the dividers are of format two power x or five power x or ten power x, that is remainders are two four x. Or remainders are 525, 125, or remainders are 10, 100, and 1000. The outcome was quite simple. We needed only a limited number of digits. Either we need only single digit S, or two digits R and S, or three digits Q, QRS. Here, we need every single digit. But the advantage is every single digit is multiplied by one. That's why we just need to add all the digits. Just all the digits. Let's take a number. 9876 by 9. So it's just like 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 by 9. That's going to be 30 by 9. And again, no need to find 30 by 9 remainder, which is 3. So you can simply add the digits. 30 by 9, the remainder is 3. We just need to add the digits until we get a single digit number. This is the advantage. So here, if we are trying to divide n divided by 9 remainder that's quite simple it depends on some of the digits of n 
divided by 9. The one more outcome that one more inference that you can note down is if we have a number 10 and raise it to some power x and divide by 9, the remainder is always plus 1. So 10 raised to some number x and divide by 9, the remainder is plus 1. x is a whole number, x is an integer, a positive integer, of course. We always take x as an integer whenever we are trying to solve competitive examinations. Let's see what happens if we divide n by 11. Obviously, the outcome is going to be p by 11 remainder into 10 power 0 by 11 remainder. No, no, 10 cube. 10 cube by 11 remainder and so on until the last term that is s by 11 remainder into 10 power 0 by 11 remainder. Now, the outcome is going to be, let's start from unit term. 10 power 0, that is 1, 1 by 11 remainder is 1, s by 11 remainder depends on s, so it is s into 1, that is s, s by 11 remainder. The next term is 10 power 1 by 11, 10 power 1 is 10, 10 by 11 remainder is 10, r by 11, it depends on r, so r into 10, that is 10 times r, so that is 10 times r by 11. The previous one is 10 square by 11, 10 square by 11 remainder is 1. Q by 11 depends on Q, so it's one time of Q that is going to be Q by 11 remainder plus it's 10 Q by 11 that is again 10 P by 11 depends on P, so that's going to be 10 times of P by 11 remainder. Again, we need every single digit. However, not every single digit is multiplied by the same constant here. S and Q or multiplied by 1, the remaining two terms, two digits, P and R are multiplied by 10. Now, we can write this number as 10 times of P plus Q plus 1 time of, no, not P plus Q, it's P plus R, 1 time of Q plus S divided by 11. Addition is the most easiest one, that is why we are trying to convert the whole number into Additions. Now here, Q and S are the alternate digits, and in fact, uh, it started from unit term. One alternate series started from unit term. That is multiplied by one. The second alternate series is multiplied by ten. Instead of it, if we have only digits left, that is P, Q, R, S, and then we are just down to simple mathematical operations like addition and subtraction, it would have been much easier. Let's see whether we can stay away from 10. Let me tell you one simple explanation before we see whether we can do it. Whenever let's say 11 divided by 11 remainder, that's going to be 0. 12 by 11 remainder, that's going to be plus 1. 13 by 11 remainder, that's going to be plus 2. 14 by 11 remainder, that's going to be plus 3. And it moves like this and it reaches a remainder again 21 by 11 remainder that's going to be 10 now 22 by 11 remainder that's going to be again 0 so it's like 0 1 2 3 and 10 now let's go down 10 by 11 remainder we know that it's 10 9 by 11 remainder we know that it's 9 8 by 11 we know that it's 8 and then like this 7 by 11 is like 7 so since it's growing and it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like this. Why can't we take 10 by 11 remainder as minus 1? 9 by 11 as minus 2. 8 by 11 as minus 3. 7 by 11 as minus 4. It's not that 10. It's applicable only for 10 by 11. It's just like that for any number. Let's take 7 by 9. So that's going to be minus 2 remainder. We don't get negative reminders. We always get reminders which are positive. We don't get negative reminders. And we do get a reminder which is zero. That is neither positive nor negative. Now, whenever we come across a reminder which, which is negative, that is impossible as per the 
conditions of mathematics what we can do is whenever you get a negative remainder let's say minus one just add divisor to it here in this case it's minus one plus eleven so that's going to be ten now the one simple advantage here is we can solve so many questions by taking negative remainders it just saves a lot of time for us now if we apply this one here then this appears like 10 by 11 remainder is minus 1 so that is going to be minus 1 times of p plus r plus 1 time of q plus s divided by 11 of course it's, it's really not needed here but when we are trying to take a new divisor this negative remainder approach might be extremely useful so in such a case this is like 1 time of q plus s that by 11 minus 1 time of p plus r by 11 that's very easy adding the alternate digit starting from the unit term minus the remaining alternate digits now let's see 1 2 3 4 divide by 11 now this is 4 plus 2 which is 6 the next one is 3 plus 1 which is 4 then obviously it is 6 minus 4 by 11 so the remainder is 2 that's very easy now what happens if we have a number like 4 3 2 1 divided by 11 so that is first alternate is 1 plus 3 which is 4 the second alternate is 2 plus 4 which is 6 should we take 6 minus 4 or should we take 4 minus 6 if it is 6 minus 4 then we will get uh, a remainder as 2 if it is 4 minus 6 we will get the remainder as negative remainder which is minus 2 whenever the remainder is minus 2 we just need to add divisor to the negative remainder to get the original one now should we take 6 minus 4 or 4 minus 6 that is the most important one now it is quite simple we just need to take the first one as the sum of the alternate digits starting from unit digit so since the unit digit is 1, so 1 plus 3, we need to take that sum of that series first and subtract the sum of the other one. So that's very simple. Now let's see. The outcome here is n divided by 11 remainder. It is some of the alternate digits starting from unit digit minus some of the other alternate digits this by 11 very easy now I'll tell you one more inference here it, it, it's going to be good that is 10 power 0 2 4 and so on divided by 11 the remainder is always plus 1 on the other case 10 power 1 3 5 and so on divided by 11 the remainder is minus 1 we can rewrite this as 10 power odd divided by 11 the remainder is minus 1 whereas 10 power even divided by 11 the remainder is plus 1 so now uh, a question can be asked here is 10 power x divided by 11 the remainder is 1 whereas x is greater than or equal to 100 and less than or equal to 200 how many values can x take how many values can x take just solve that's it yeah it is every alternate term here it's like 101 terms that is since 100 and 200 are included they've got 101 terms 
the first term is also even last term is also even so out of the 1 not 1 terms 51 terms are even 50 terms are odd so if if, if the remainder is odd then x can take 50 if the remainder is even that is plus 1 x can take 51 digits here it's a uh, 1 is plus now it's not for 9 only the sum of the digits is applicable for factor of 9 that is 3 as well so for 11 it happens like this the remainder depends on the difference of sum of the alternate digits starting from the unit digit and sum of the remaining alternate digits of the number n so if n equal to a b c d then the remainder is the digit starting from unit term that is d plus uh, sum of the digits starting from unit term that is d plus b minus sum of the remaining that is c plus a in the next class in the next session i'm going to discuss divisors which are 7 13 and 37 7 13 13 7 are unfamiliar yet they are very very important i suggest you not to skip the next video we have got two more videos to come in the next video i'm going to discuss divisor 7 11 7 13 37 in the next the, the final one i'm going to discuss divisors which are of the format 10 power x plus 1 and 10 power x minus 1 once the remaining two sessions are also completed i'm going to solve all the original questions thank you very much